Welcome back, everyone. Today is Tuesday, June the 27th. I'm Ryan Hill. I'm John Galantis. You're listening to Clearview Today with Dr. Abaddon Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com, or if you have any questions for Dr. Shah or suggestions for new topics, send us a text to 252 252- 582-5028. That's right. And you guys can help us keep this conversation going by supporting the show, sharing it online, leaving us a good review on iTunes or Spotify. Absolutely nothing less than five stars. I will come to your house and I will harass you. <laughs> do not test me. We're going to leave a link in the description of this podcast so you can do just that. And the verse of the day today comes from Mark chapter 6, verse 34. And Jesus, when he came out, saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion for them because they were like sheep not having a shepherd. So he began to teach them many things. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that's one thing we see constantly in the Gospels is the crowds just flocking to Jesus because they're looking for help. They're looking for miracles and they want attention. They, yeah. they see that he's doing something and they, they want to be part of it. So there is this desire like, God, whatever you're doing, Lord, let me let me just be here. Do yeah. this for me. Just, just keep proving to me that you are who you say you are. And they're expecting him to do miracles and they're expecting him to perform signs. But Jesus knew better. He knew that these people needed shepherd yeah you know they needed a teacher someone to teach them solid down to earth practical teaching that comes from god himself yeah. sometimes i feel like we fall into the trap of uh mapping human frustration onto jesus mm-hmm. and certainly there were moments where you know he 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 is both god and man um but jesus looking out of the crowds like we would be like oh my gosh there's so many people mm-hmm. like i gotta talk to all these people and somebody's gonna get healed and i gotta teach them this and they don't understand this no jesus was moved with compassion That's for right. them he looks out and it's his heart goes out to them like a loving shepherd taking care of his sheep he's like these people need someone to lead them they need they need god's hope and his love yeah and it's not the false compassion that we typically see like today like out in the culture on university campuses or on youtube or, or yep. facebook or wherever we see this this false compassion that's sort of rats. Oh, sorry. I thought I had to sneeze. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> we see this sort of uh, false, false compassion that rises up like a rises sneeze up sometimes. like a sneeze. Yeah, <laughs> no, but we see this false compassion that rises up out of this this idea that I can benefit from this. Yeah. I can get ahead if I capitalize on these people's suffering and put myself in this like morally superior right. place. That is not at all what Jesus did. Jesus said, "Listen, I, I can't be any more superior than I am right yep. now. I want these people to know the truth. I want them to come to know the Father." Absolutely. And then it was moved from a place of real genuine compassion for his creation yeah and dr shah has said it best before if your compassion costs other people and not you that's right and it's not actual compassion that's right it's not compassion at someone else's expense is not compassion but jesus's compassion ultimately cost him everything amen to that we're gonna get dr shah in just a minute we got a great episode planned for you guys today but if you have any questions or suggestions for new topics send us a text to 252-582-5028 or you can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com we'll be right back Good morning, afternoon, evening, Clearview Today listeners. My name is John. And I'm David. And we just want to take a quick second and let you know about another way that you can keep in touch with Dr. Shah's work. And that is his weekly podcast series, Sermons by Abadan Shah, PhD. As a lot of you may know, or maybe some of you don't know. If you don't know, you do now. And if you don't know, then maybe just pop off the podcast. David, I'm just playing. pop off the podcast. I'm just playing. Keep listening. <laughs> Dr. Shaw is actually the lead pastor of Clearview Church in North Carolina. Every single weekend, he preaches expository messages that challenge and inspire us to live God-honoring lives. One of the four core values of Clearview Church is that we're a Bible-believing church. So every sermon is coming directly from Scripture, which is great because that guarantees that there are timeless truths that are constantly applicable to our lives. This is a great resource because whether you're driving, whether you're cleaning the house, whether you're working out, you can always benefit from hearing the Word of God spoken into your life. And God's Word is always going to do something new for you every time you hear it. Sometimes it's conviction, and sometimes it's encouragement. But know that every time you listen to God's Word, you're inviting the Holy Spirit to move and work in your life. You guys can check out the Sermons by Abaddon Shah PhD podcast. First and foremost, check it out on our church app. Uh, That's the Clearview app. You can get that in the Google Play Store. You can get that on iTunes. But you can also find the podcast on the Apple Podcast app or on our website at clearviewbc.org. And listen, if you've got a little extra time on your hands, you just want to do some further reading, you can also read the transcripts of those sermons. Those are available on Dr. Shah's website, abaddonshah.com. And we're going to leave you guys a little link in the description so you can follow it. But for right now, David... Let's hop back in. All right. Mm 
Welcome back to Clearview Today with Dr. Abadan Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com, or if you have any questions or suggestions for new topics, send us a text to 252-582-5028. That's right, and if today is your first time ever tuning in to the Clearview Today Show, we want to welcome you, let you know exactly who's talking to you today. Dr. Abadan Shah is a PhD in New Testament textual criticism, professor at Carolina University, author, full-time pastor, and the host of today's show. You can find all of his work on his website, that's abadanshah.com. Why are you on my side? I'm I'm just, I'm really close to you. I I feel like like we need to just promote an atmosphere. Atmosphere like of closeness and bond. No, I like a I like a an atmosphere. I like an atmosphere of distance. distance. Yeah, a he, healthy distance. He wants conflict. I want we, conflict. You want conflict. Hundred <laughs> percent. Well, you're in luck because we're going to we're going to talk about that today. <laughs> Dr. Shaw, we've got some exciting guests on yes. the show today. Do you want to introduce our our special Absolutely. guest? Absolutely. So several years ago, we had the opportunity to um, listen to. Uh, the podcast, number one marriage podcast, Tony Elisa DiLorenzo. It was recommended to us by a friend. And uh, at first, I didn't want to listen to it. Mm-hmm. I was like, no, I have too many things to do. And I counsel people regularly about marriage. I don't need to listen to that. <laughs> and so um, they said, no, just listen to it. And it was Nicole. And so we were headed to Virginia, actually, to get a marriage, uh, for me to get a marriage license to, you know, to marry in the Commonwealth. And we listened on the way. Mm. And I was like, wow. I was touched. I was hooked. And um, before we know it, we, we had them here several times. So Tony yeah. and Lisa DiLorenzo, welcome to our show. Well, awesome. Thank you for having us. We're glad <laughs> yeah. to be here again. Thank you. Again. Yeah, always, always a pleasure and an honor to be up here with you guys. Absolutely. Is it like a second home now? It kind of feels that way. It yeah, definitely yeah. feels like we're coming home yeah. when, we, when we come here to Clearview. Did you wow. ever imagine that would ever happen? I mean, you just like on the <laughs> East Coast. North Carolina. There, you're going to make friends for life and, and be coming out this way and staying and hanging out. No. And you know what? Um, God moves. And mm-hmm. I'm so glad he did because literally, Elise and I live in San Diego, as you know. And so often we talk about our Clearview family Mm -hmm. and those that are here. Right. And how blessed we are to know you guys, um, you know, you, Pastor Shaw and Nicole and and everybody here on the team and and just having that awesome relationship because we look forward to coming out here. Mm -hmm. We really do. And and I I was telling our guys, we look forward to having you guys Mm -hmm. here. It's fun. It's exciting. It's a learning experience, and and our church family looks forward to seeing you all yeah. again. Amen. That's right. Let's do you want to kind of do you want to kind of maybe recap us on because you guys have been on some of our shows before, mm-hmm. but but never on Clearview today. Do you want to kind of recap how we got started doing like the conferences here at Clearview? Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, we Jason mm-hmm. and Lana, you mm-hmm. know, are members of our church. We kind of talked amongst ourselves because. What you guys were doing was so such a blessing to us, mm-hmm. and we wanted to open that up here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I believe it was back in 2020. That was the first time, right? No. 2019. 2019. 2019. 2019. Yeah. Yes. Because yeah. 2020 is a whole other story. Yeah. 2020 was, uh, <laughs> that was, so that was a whole other story. story. <laughs> yes. But 2019, we, yes. we worked it out where you yeah. guys came here and did a marriage conference. We had people from everywhere come. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It yeah. Was, it was. It I think we had close to 200 couples. Yeah. That, at that event, was that your first live conference or one of your firsts? One of the first. One of the first here on the East Coast. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. first on the East Coast. Okay. Yeah. Wow. okay. And I think we actually had ten states, if ten I remember correctly, ten, ten yeah, states I represented yeah. all along the Eastern, um, the East Coast, and mm-hmm. so that was exciting for us to come. Yeah. Had never been to Henderson, and, and here we are, and it was just it was such an excellent right. team and family here that mm-hmm. it made it easy for us to want to come back. I remember that. I mean, it was it was awesome, and it touched lives, mm-hmm. and we have couples today who still talk about that 2019, mm-hmm. wow. and then. We had them come back in 2020, mm-hmm. and and so everything was going great. Yeah. And then right about, I think it was like end of January into yes. February, we're talking about uh, there's this. It was like a down. Little, maybe was like a little, happening. It was like a hiccup almost. <laughs> Nothing happening. Like like something happening. happening. We don't know what's happening and and all that. And we're like, we're just gonna move forward with mm-hmm. this. Yeah. And we and you did. Guys came. Yeah, we yeah. did. And we did. It was the week before everything shut down, mm-hmm. and we were here, and and we gave it our all. And I think, you know, we look back now, and I do believe, as tough as that was for so many of us, and Elisa and I included, right? I do believe what we poured in that day into those couples. I believe it impacted them mm-hmm. absolutely, definitely throughout the the shutdowns and everything that each of us had to address and go through during the sure. pandemic. Um, 
And so we still went and we still had an amazing time. Um, Literally the world shut down four days later. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, that was the last live event that yeah. we did before COVID. Oh, yeah. It was wow. here. I remember and, that. and it was such almost a surreal experience. And it's, it's always weird now coming yeah. back because I remember those memories are so vivid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I see pictures on my phone sometimes of us because uh, we went and, and hung out downtown mm -hmm. Raleigh. You know, yes. We stayed there for a right. couple of days and we would take walks and it was like mm -hmm. weird. Yeah. Nobody on the streets. I mean, yeah. people are wearing masks and it's mm -hmm. all like... It's like the walking dead out what here. Is what is happening here? Oh, you yeah. know, is this really going to happen? Mm -hmm. And then, of course, mm -hmm. four days later, it happened. It happened. We were rushing home. We were like on those flights trying to get home because yeah. everything was shutting, shutting down. Shutting down, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. Um, you know, we want to get back to our children. And so just making sure we're <laughs> getting on flights and getting back to California before yeah. everything did. Yeah, yeah. Because nobody knew how it was going to turn out. Yeah. That's right. But... Yeah. It's, it's been exciting what God is doing. Yeah. Even through all this craziness, God is still God and mm -hmm. Jesus is still changing lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're so glad to have you guys back. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having us. How did you get your start in marriage and family? Because I know that's that's what that's the focus of your podcast and yeah. that's kind of sort of the focus of your whole ministry is like mm -hmm. marriage counseling and, and writing books and producing podcasts and content. How, why marriage and family specifically? The short answer, because we were really bad at it. <laughs> and, and we were really dysfunctional yeah. for a long period of time. And, you know, when we needed when we needed help, when we needed resources, we couldn't find anything that simply spoke to us that sounded mm. like an ordinary couple just mm -hmm. dealing with ordinary challenges. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Tony likes to joke. He's like, it just felt like they were old white guys saying, you know, go date your wife or have a conversation. He's yeah. like, <laughs> what do I do with that? So <laughs> right. yeah. And there was no, there was no like in between. Mm -hmm. And so as we went and, and had seen freedom and breakthrough in our own marriage, that's where things started to change. We mm -hmm. got asked to speak at the time um, at the church we were attending to speak at the marriage getaway. Mm -hmm. And so we, we shared there mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. this whole experience that we had. And it was after that people were coming up to us going, well, what's next? Mm -hmm. And I remember looking around cause I, I, at the time I owned another business. I was just running my own my other business, we had younger children. I'm thinking, what's next? I'm like, <laughs> um, we're good. We're going to continue yeah. <laughs> to grow our marriage. And we're going to continue to do that because we believe in that. Mm -hmm. And then it was a little bit after that where we continued to hear people. And that's when we took that step of faith of just going, you know what? We're going to speak into this. That's right. Mm -hmm. it, we, we, need to, we need to speak into this because if we're not hearing it and we're not finding it, then there are many, many others mm -hmm. who aren't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we need to step in, and that's where yeah. it all began yeah. in 2010. January 2010 was the first episode we released of the One Extraordinary Marriage Show. Wow. Wow. I was graduating high school. Wow. Okay. It's probably I was graduating bad. college. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So there you go. 2010. That's incredible. That was it. Wow. wow. Yeah. That's that's amazing. And, and I mean, you guys have, have recorded tons of episodes since mm -hmm. then. You talked about everything under the sun. And mm -hmm. I mean, there's more content coming. Let's talk for a minute about the, the books, the writing. Mm -hmm. what, what led you from um, podcasting and uh, a, a show like that where people would listen to to actually putting resources in people's hands? Mm -hmm. The truth of the matter is, is that couples that are married want books. I mean, it's one thing to be able to consume information. I mean, obviously, everybody's listening to Clearview today mm -hmm. uh, and keep listening. But you can only do so much with what you hear. Mm -hmm. And it's how do we, our mission has always been to equip couples with the tools mm -hmm. and strategies that they need. And books become one of those strategies where you can go back, you can highlight, you can dog ear, you can mm -hmm. hand it to your spouse and be mm -hmm. like, I really need you to read this section or even read it out loud to them. But it's that, it's that consumable information that you can take action on mm -hmm. instead of just hearing it in your ears. Mm -hmm. I think that's, I think that's, you know, great advice, even outside the realm of marriage and family, just with any content that you produce. I know that's something that you were talking to me about, Dr. Shah, is that, that you, you put in all this work to get the PhD, but if you don't produce, you know, if right. you don't write, if you right. don't contribute to mm -hmm. the field, mm. then right. what do you, what do you, what did you get it for? That's right. Yeah. That's right. It is it? to equip people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's exactly what y'all are doing. And that's mm -hmm. what we're trying to do is to equip people mm -hmm. and to help them grow in Christ, yes. to right. help them make wise decisions and that's why we even have you on the show because this is also part of we talk about marriage and family mm -hmm. on the show and you guys uh, have written two books and the first one is um well you've written many books yeah, uh, yeah. but this one is six pillars of intimacy this came out that when was, did it come out that's November, uh 2021 mm -hmm. right yeah. that's right and and then recently 
uh, another book, Six Pillars, kind of based off of this, uh, of intimacy, conflict resolution. Mm-hmm. Great book, mm-hmm. great book. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that book really came, the second book, uh, Six Pillars of Intimacy, Conflict Resolution, came out of you know thousands of hours of coaching mm. couples and individuals and seeing that virtually every coaching session I have has some form of conflict in it. Right. Mm-hmm. And recognizing that mm. people don't know what they don't know about conflict. They just know right. how they react to it mm-hmm. right. and what the dance looks like. And so we wanted to be able to equip, hey, here's what it looks like. Here's where some of these patterns started from and came from, and here's what you're doing. Mm-hmm. But just because you've done it doesn't mm-hmm. mean you have to keep right. doing it that way. Right. Well, I like how you put conflict, you kind of frame it as it's a dance. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? There's steps that you have to take. And it's not that, like I, like I recently took dance lessons with my wife, I, I think at your that, request. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and, um, you know, dance up, it, it, this is a really ham handed analogy, but for me, a dance was like something I'm like, I'm just going to avoid this. Right. I don't want to dance. Dance <laughs> is not a thing. And I feel like people think that with conflict too. Absolutely. Like this is not a useful thing in marriage. Mm-hmm. Conflict is something to just avoid at all costs. But, you know, that's not really conducive to a healthy relationship. Not at all, because, you know, there's a quote that I have in the book that says you repeat what you don't repair. Mm-hmm. And so if you don't repair your marriage, the areas where there, you know, there are differences and things like that, you're going to keep having those fights right. over and over again. And they'll escalate and they'll mm-hmm. become more intense. And then you'll just disconnect. And yeah. nobody gets married to be disconnected from their right. spouse. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, the first conflict began with the first couple. Mm-hmm. Well, right, yeah, Adam absolutely. And, Eve. and at the root of that was sin, mm-hmm. right? I mean, they, they, they lost that sense of trust, mm-hmm. began to blame each other. And when God came and confronted them, uh, you know, Adam's response was, this woman that you gave me, yeah. Yeah. right? And can you imagine? I mean, they're living, I, I, it's not a perfect world. It's, it's an excellent world. Mm-hmm. It's, it's without sin. Mm-hmm. Uh, and all of a sudden, they're blaming each other. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah. yeah. Right. People who walked with God yeah. blaming each other mm. and there's conflict in that mm-hmm. home. And then of course, you know, there were other things that happened, you mm-hmm. know, Cain killed Abel. Mm-hmm. Imagine children bringing conflict in the marriage. Mm-hmm. So yeah. the Bible does not shy away from those subjects. Right. It actually talks about them That's because right. mm-hmm. this is normal part of life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think hearing that is is transformative for people because if a lot of times you feel like I'm the only one who deals with this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is only true for my marriage. It's only true for me and my spouse. This is not a struggle for anyone else. Dr. Shah, have you seen that in your interactions with people, even just like in a pastoral counseling role? People feel this yeah. sort of isolation, like I'm the only one struggling with this. No one else has yeah, this problem. They don't want to get help mm-hmm. because they feel like if I say I need help or if I uh, you know, go to a marriage conference, because we, we announce it all the mm-hmm. time, like mm-hmm. the recently <laughs> we did and and Ryan, I mean, he hits it hard every Absolutely. service. Hey, there is a marriage conference here, mm-hmm. a seminar here on Sunday evening. Two hours will radically change your lives. It'll help your marriage. And But people are like, well, if I go, people think I'll have problems. Mm-hmm. But yeah. everybody has problems. Yep. Right. It's how you handle them. Mm-hmm. How do you deal with them? And here's, a, you know, here's some help. Mm-hmm. Especially men. We were just mm-hmm. talking about that a few yeah. moments ago, right? Yeah, and... What I have seen over the years is bringing that stuff up, Mm -hmm. like bringing it to light on the show. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about these tough topics. How are we dealing with it? Because for me, when I get behind my microphone, I really go, okay, who's that one couple we're going to impact today? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if they're going through this, how can I help them see that they're not alone? Only one. They're not the only ones dealing with this. Maybe Elise and I have even ourselves gone through that the same struggle. Mm -hmm. And if it's not us, maybe it's somebody else in the one family. Mm -hmm. And so we can show and give perspective so that they go, it's time for us to get right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like right. it's time for us to take that step to go. Okay, maybe it is just picking up a book. Mm-hmm. And that's a big step for some people. For others, it might mean, hey, I'm going to get marriage coaching. For others, you know, it may mean we're going to go on a on, on a retreat, a mm-hmm. getaway, whatever that is. But helping them to go, you're not the only one. And if you get in this place, you're going to be around people who are going through the exact same thing mm-hmm. or similar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've never seen anybody come to the conference or watch this show or mm-hmm. read a book or read one of these books and say, well, that was a total waste of time. It didn't <laughs> yeah. work out. <laughs> yeah. I, there may, maybe maybe there's some out there, but sure. I haven't because they all walk away going, yeah, there are things I need to work on, you know, and they may dilly-dally, but 
but they never walk away going, yeah, that was not worth it. And right? you can never blame someone else for your marriage failing. You know, there's only two people. So either it's all her fault or, you know, there's something. Dis- I can't blame Ryan because my marriage is disconnecting or Dr. Shaw because right. me and Ellie aren't connecting. Right. There's only the two of us. Yeah. So if I'm truly proud enough to say it's all Ellie and not me, it's like, okay, you've you've got some other issues you got to fix. I can talk to that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or it's the fact that, hey, we're both sinful people mm-hmm. and we both need Jesus Christ first and foremost, but then we need a body of believers around us to mm-hmm. strengthen us and encourage us. Yeah. Well, you know, the Bible says it's not good for man to be alone. Mm. And mm. that wasn't just referring to wife, but right. I really think referring to community. And sure. what does that look like when, when you're in a church community, when you're in that body of Christ and you can say, hey, we're going through this. That's right. Mm-hmm. It really does weaken the enemy's hold over your marriage, over that conflict, because now you're bringing light onto it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when you step into that, what, what is the freedom that can come in your marriage. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Bible talks a lot about this. You know, uh, I I had a passage open while y'all were talking. It's from 2 Corinthians 5, uh, 17. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Mm -hmm. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And the very next verse, which is verse 18, says, now all things are of God, Mm -hmm. who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Mm. Mm. Powerful. Ministry of reconciliation. So um, this is not just optional, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but helping people manage conflicts, whether it's in marriage or family or in the church family or the community where we are, people are divided. Mm -hmm. Um, This is part of what we're supposed to do. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. He has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Hence, yeah. You're on the show. <laughs> we As we're talking about yeah. conflict, conflict. conflict resolution. Conflict, yeah. Absolutely. Well, in, in the in the great thing about the newest book is anybody can use it. Mm-hmm. And Elisa, Elisa writes the book. There, it, it is Elisa DiLorenzo with Tony DiLorenzo. I, I give my insights to it. And, sure. and I have seen her step into places and, and speak mm-hmm. to corporate individuals, um, pastors, leaders to go, this is happening mm-hmm. in different places. Mm-hmm. Sure. But once you learn this and how you use it, you can do exactly what you said. Mm-hmm. You can reconcile. That's mm-hmm. right. In those relationships, no matter if it's in the church body, in you know, in the office or at home. And this could be between you and, and a child. Mm-hmm. You know, because we have conflict with children. Absolutely. Those of us who have children, all of us do. Mm-hmm. We, we know the conflict that can be <laughs> that can arise from that. And yet if we look at this it's going, okay, how can I change the dynamic so that mm-hmm. I can reconcile with them mm-hmm. so I draw them closer. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. It's one of those things that I think people don't really take to heart that this I'm with this person for the rest of my life and I made a vow that we're going to be together forever. You know what I mean? And so to think that there's never going to be con like, like early on in our marriage, I was like, well, I don't really have anything to fight about. This is great. Like, but then as you start <laughs> doing life with this person and, and things start, I, I, I was, I was drawn by something you said that everybody has such different reactions to conflict. And a lot yes. of times we think that those reactions don't play into the actual conflict themselves. The conflict is all that matters. The, how we react to it doesn't actually matter. But really, the reactions end up being a bigger deal than the original conflict was. Oh, in a lot of cases. Yeah. Absolutely. Because whether you're rolling your eyes or you're huffing and puffing or you're yeah. leaving the room or doing whatever, now we get so fixated on your reaction uh-huh. that you forget what the problem was. Right. That started, and, if, and that's how it repeats itself because if we don't actually address what the problem is and we're just fixated on the reaction. Mm-hmm. Then it, it becomes a, you know a me versus you type of thing instead of saying hey what's what's drawing mm-hmm. us apart from one another. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now one of the things y'all talk about in the book is the conflict cycle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep, talk a little bit about that. <laughs> well, yeah, early on when I was working with couples, I would see that they would be able to you know I was like, well, tell me what your fights look like. Right. And it's really interesting when you stop and are asked that question, how many people can take you through, well, if I say this, then you know, my spouse is going to say this, and then, well, and then this happens, and then right. here's what happened. And, and I realized that everyone was describing that. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, you know. There's a pattern. There. It's a pattern. Yeah. And what really, in, as a coach, what I find helps is that if people can diagram their patterns mm-hmm. and see it in black and That's white, right. if they write it down, then they can take power mm-hmm. over their patterns. Right. They become empowered to make different choices and to own the choices that they are making. And that's right. where the breakthrough and the freedom that's right. comes. That's mm-hmm. right. 
Yeah, patterns help us in, in, in any, any aspect of life. Mm-hmm. Once you see a pattern regarding something, whether it's weather or this and that, you're able to then navigate through that mm-hmm. and know what you can control, what you can't. Mm-hmm. And there are things you cannot control and you have to give them over to God and yeah. say, God, you handle this. Then there are things you can control, whether it's your mouth or whether it's your, uh, you know, uh, actions or how you, uh, nonverbals. I mean, all those things are, are to, you know, controllable. That's mm-hmm. in our hands. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Again, to the Holy Spirit. Sure. Uh, well, I've, I'm glad you tacked that on at the end because I do believe it's that grace that the Holy Spirit gives us to take control of it. Because yeah. I'm the type of person to where I'll, I'll try to control the things I can't control and then give up control of the things I, that I actually can change. I'm like, ah, that's just me. I can't do anything about it. I'm going to fixate on this stuff over here that I yeah. can't control. And it's through the Holy Spirit's grace that, you know, that, that pattern can be broken. Well, and I think what you just said there, John, you know, that expression, that's just me. Mm-hmm. And the reality is that if we believe that God is with in mm-hmm. us, mm-hmm. then we're not just me. Right. It's mm-hmm. not just us. We have the power to become more Christ-like, to take, you know, self-control yep. is right. there, um, to use the self-control that we have in our within us to create change mm-hmm. and not to just default to who we think we are or the way that we've been. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I love that because, um, you know, Dr. Shah, like the verse that you read, we're, we're a new creation in mm-hmm. Christ. Right. So the, the just us may have been the old sinful us. Yes. But it, like you said, Elisa, it's not just us anymore. Uh-huh. We're, we're, we're us plus. Yes. Oh, Jesus is with nice, us. Dude. And, uh, you know, we, we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us mm-hmm. and we are able to, you know, like you said, Dr. Shaw, have that ministry of reconciliation. Mm-hmm. So important. One of the frustrations that Christian couples have. Now, this I believe this book can help anybody, whoever yeah. you are, whether you're a believer or not. It, yeah. it, it has principles in there that will help you. If you know Christ as your Savior, That's I right. promise you, you have somebody helping you mm-hmm. yep. other than just you following the instructions in the book. But what I'm trying to get to is, is this. Um, it's the sinful self. When we get saved, of course, God is with us. Mm-hmm. The Holy Spirit is with us. The truth is before us. But doesn't mean that all of a sudden, you know, all your old problems are gone or your mm-hmm. selfish behavior is gone or your tendencies are done with. It's a, it's a struggle. You have mm-hmm. to learn, mm-hmm. okay? You have to learn. Discipleship. This is, in a sense, discipleship. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and, and so uh, it's a lifelong process. So especially Christian couples, don't get discouraged mm-hmm. when you have conflicts or you get angry or the old self comes out and the venom comes out. God is dealing with you. He's That's helping right. you. Right. That's right. Take the help. And mm-hmm. this, th- these are one of the tools that will help you. And I would say on the backside of that, because we are, at least and I've been married 26 years. Mm-hmm. So we've gone through a lot in our, in our years. And, and as we even get older and our kids are leaving, there are still issues that come up. Mm-hmm. And so we use what we teach of course. because that's where we are. That's right. And then on the other side of that though, is the ability to forgive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think we have to look at when we look at conflict resolution, especially for believers, are we able to forgive? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean we forget what happened, but we are releasing that to God and allowing God to that's right. take care of that that's issue, right. the problem that we've gone through and going, it is finished mm-hmm. and we're going to move forward. That's, that's right. right. Amen. Mm-hmm. That's Amen. awesome. Dr. Shaw, as, as we close, we have just a little bit of time left. Um, what, who could benefit from these books from Tony and Elisa or from the One Extraordinary Marriage podcast? Oh, absolutely. I would say uh, if you are... If you don't believe in Christ, I mean, you know, you you, you can still benefit from the mm-hmm. principles, mm-hmm. Uh, whether in the book or the one extra, extraordinary marriage podcast, which is tremendous. There's so many. How many episodes are there now? Seven hundred and sixty. Seven hundred and sixty. I yeah. promise you, every one of them. Just <laughs> click on it and listen to it. Uh, you, you'll find something that will help you in your marriage, in your relationships. So that will help you. Uh, but if you're believers, it will definitely help you mm-hmm. because, you know, God wants us to get help. He wants mm-hmm. us to find wisdom. Mm-hmm. And uh, you guys operate from that mindset. And, and I'm grateful for you guys. Oh, we, you. we are very thankful that God's using you and you're in our prayers. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you yeah. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for being on the show today. Tony and Elisa DiLorenzo of the One Extraordinary Marriage Podcast. If you're not listening already, make sure you go check out their podcast and the resources available to you as well. If, uh, if you enjoyed today's episode, you have any questions or suggestions for new topics, send us a text to 252-582-5028. If you'd like to know about more resources like we talked about today, text in, let us know. We'd love to resource you in that way. Visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. And don't forget, you can partner with us financially on that same website. Click that donate button. Let us know it's coming from the Clearview Today Show family. We love you guys. We'll see you next time on Clearview Today.